Hi and welcome to another Trains tutorial. This tutorial will be on turf effects and we will outline uh, all the parameters that come with the effects layer in a lot more detail than the previous video. So let's get started. We'll be switching between uh, this page here, the turf effects effects layer wiki page for trains and uh, in Surveyor as well. So we'll go into Surveyor first Go to our Topology tab, open Advanced tab, and Edit Add Effects Layer. We'll give it a name, make it Grass. And there we have the Effects Layer window. At the top we can see that the Effects Layer has a name. Uh, the next option is a Effects Layer Asset. Now these assets are created with the config and texture files uh, and import it into Content Manager. If we scroll down to the bottom of this page, there is a TurfFX asset creation page. Uh, when we open that one up, you can read all about how to create your own TurfFX. We'll do another uh, video as well, a tutorial video on actually creating a TurfFX asset and submitting it into Content Manager and using it. Um, but for now, this tutorial will be long enough when we just cover these uh, parameters for turf effects. So what we'll start off with is just using uh, an asset I know fairly well, which is Grass 4. It has fairly straight grass blades. Uh, when we paint it down, that's how it's been created. So I'm going to use that for this tutorial. The next parameter is uh, turf effects density and the default value and turf effects height scale and the constant value which th those four there we're going to talk about uh, probably near the end of this tutorial just because uh, they're quite in intense and you've got to get your head around them to understand them so we'll move on to geometry scale which is uh, basically a height scale I think it's in meters so we're going to set our grass to about 35 centimeters the blade width is how thick your blades are. Generally the grass blades uh, 0.01 is pretty good. Uh, 0.02 might be also acceptable, but for grass blades you'll want this to be fairly low, so we're gonna leave that. Uh, the blade width noise is the offset of the width itself, uh, so randomly there'll be 20% uh, difference. There could be 20% difference between each blade, but we don't want any of them to be randomly uh, different in the width size, so we're gonna put that as zero. You can, however, add that in if you like. There's the blade height noise, same thing. It's a random offset for the uh, geometry scale or the height and it'll be, I think it's 50% of the value that you've got in your geometry scale. Um, that's a random possibility that it could be the difference of 50%. So I'll leave, I might put that at 0.25. So we've got a little bit of randomness going with the height. Uh, we've got width scale near and width scale far. This is a little, um, a little bit of information on the wiki I'm gonna tell you about. So we'll just jump over there and scroll down to that section so the width scale near and the width scale height. Uh, generally there's two options I usually use. You can see there's pictures here. Um, these pictures are represented by the values you put in these boxes. Uh, so one, 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 zero will give you this middle uh, geometry. And one, 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 one will give you this square looking geometry. Basically, each one of these boxes represents um, a point or a vertice in the in the actual mesh itself. So uh, for width scale near, that's that's for blades near the camera. Width scale far is for blades in the distance. You might want to set them differently to each other if you want thicker blades in the distance and you won't really notice the little tips of them. You could set that to one. Uh, so again, one, 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 one will give you the first option. 1110 will give you this option here. Uh, those are the two main options that you'll use. 
So we're gonna use the 1110, which is gonna give us uh, a blade that looks like a grass blade. For this option, you could use transparent trans transparency. Um, you could also use opaque textures as well, but that's that's a pretty good option for transparency. So is this option, because you don't you lose that bit at the top, it doesn't have to render. It's a little bit more performance um, that you gain, but not much. So it just depends on what you want to use it for, what visuals you're going for. You've got bending scale. That's the animation of the blade itself. Uh, we'll, we'll change the, uh, the environment settings, the wind, increase the strength, and you'll see how much it bends at point two. And as you increase that, it'll get more and more um, you'll get more and more bend in your blades when they animate. Uh, dispersal, if we jump back to the wiki, dispersal is basically at each one of these seed points, uh, you'll see that the dispersal at zero will have all the uh, initial starting vectors down at the, ori uh, the origin of the seed point. And as you increase the dispersal, each of the seed points on the, uh, oh, sorry, each of the vertices on the blades will start to get uh, offset from the seed point or the origin of the seed point uh, and so on and so forth. So this looks like one for dispersal. This will look closer to zero for dispersal. Then you've got bunching. Bunching is the, uh, basically the rotation of the blade, <coughs> excuse me and you'll see that zero will, will act in a random manner, whereas one will make them all uh, more like a bush, I would say, or a clump of grass um, in some kind of rotation fashion where they're, they're all line. So zero is this one, and one is the far right. We're gonna leave ours at zero, um, and then you've got expansion, constant expansion multiplier and number of seeds. The number of seeds is how many, think of them as actual seeds you're planting, how many seeds you want to put in a grid because uh, we're using or we're using grid system. So how many seeds you put in that grid, the lower the number, the less seeds, the less blades that will be generated. So if you want more blades, try increasing your seeds, uh, the, the number of seeds. Uh, and then there's also the constant and value and the multiplier. These two together work together to increase the number of blades at each seed point. So uh, generally this default of 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 should suffice for most things that you wanna do. Uh, if you're getting performance issues, you could try dropping um, the constant and the multiplier. Uh, if you want a bit more, a, a bit more, um, Density, I guess, uh, there's uh, two options you can use. One, you can increase the number of multiplier, uh, the number of seeds that you're going to be putting in each grid, and that will make it thicker. Or you can also increase the constant and multiplier, um, either one or both. But I wouldn't go beyond probably, uh, I'd muck around with 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and then 0.5, or even that's going to be pretty dense. So let's have a play around and we'll see what we get. Uh, before I end and start actually painting something, there's going to be a little bit of talk on turf effects density and turf effects height scale uh, and the, the data bindings that come with these. Uh, this is probably going to take another few minutes, so please bear with me. And then once we've covered that, we'll actually start painting some turf and doing uh, and trying out some of these values. So the turf effects density, that in itself it controls how many blades of grass will actually be painted so that you can uh, either have full density, you can have half density, no density. So this is, this is how thick your grass blades are going to be. Uh, not, a, not your blades, sorry, how thick your grass grid will appear. So I'll just paint some down and then we can go through these by changing them and showing you what those things do. So let's go to height up, increase our radius, get our sensitivity just a little bit and start painting. And you'll see that once I click once, 
there's just a little bit of grass that showed up. I click again and more grass shows up. I finally click it one more time and the last bit you can see that each time I'm clicking that it's getting more and more dense. Now the reason why I've got that ability to click a few times to change the density is because of the data binding I've got here. I've got four bits of precision. So although this isn't a hundred percent correct, you can think of it as at four bits of precision I can click four times before I will have full density. At one bit of precision I can only click off and on. So if I leave the sensitivity right down and I click once I've got full density. If I go to lower it, I've got no density. So it's off and on. Int 1 is literally uh, two bits or one bit of precision which allows off and on. Okay, And that's how this binding works. The more, the more data you want, the more precision you'll get to painting the density you might want. So if I go all the way up to 32 bits you'll find that I can sit there and click lots and lots and I've got a lot of precision to work at how much grass I want in the grid. That's That gives us a lot of precision but it doesn't mean that you actually need that much precision. You've got to really think about how you want to use these bindings because at the end of the day there is only so much uh, total data that you're allowed to use and I think that's about 96 bits, if I'm correct. Read on the wiki, it does tell you. Um, so out of all the layers you're using, you want to try and keep these as low as possible to the, to the functionality you want and the look that you want. Because at the end of the day, once you hit that cap, you can't add any more layers. Um, the cap's quite big, so don't worry. I don't think you'll hit it anytime soon, but you just want to think about that for future reference. Int 4 is usually pretty good. It gives you a little bit of precision. And then also increasing the grid size, you're going to find that the more, the smaller you go, the more control you're going to get over your grids. Uh, also changing it halfway through isn't a good idea. So once you set it, you probably don't want to change it again. Otherwise you'll get things changed like that. Especially if you go down a grid size, going up, sorry, if you go up a grid size, going down a grid size is okay, I think. So you'll find that uh, with two meters, 2.5 meters, I get a lot of precision in where I'm painting this grass, but I'm also using more data. If I increase this to say 40 meters, I'm using less data, but you can see now it's blown out to 40 meter grids and I'm, I can't actually paint at 2.5 meters. I've got to go up to 40 meters worth of grid to actually start painting. I'm using less data, but I've got less precision in terms of the exact area I want the grass painted. Um, so the first box gives you the amount of um, precision for uh, how dense uh, you can make each grid per, I guess, click or per time you choose to paint. And then the next box is the precision on how large the grid will be. So between those two, you want to make sure you're using the, the smallest values you can, or the in this box, I guess it would be the largest value you can. The larger it is, less data. And then this one's the smaller it is, the less data. Uh, so you've got to get a good combo between those two. Uh, and the default value, I'm pretty sure will set uh, the default size for whatever's been placed in the, in the route. Oh, no, it hasn't. Uh, I'll have to come back to you on the default value. I do know that if it's zeroed, it will use the default value, which becomes a constant value, sorry. And anything in the route um, will become, oh, anything in the route will, will get grass basically. So it's a way of adding grass to everything quickly. Uh, then you've got, let's just set it back to the default. You've got your height scale, which I'll go into now. Uh, height scale, if you can see, everything looks the same height except we've got an offset there. So we'll turn that offset off. And now they will definitely all be the same height. And in here, in this turf effects height scale, we will add uh, four bits of precision. So I can click four times basically before I um, get to the full or, or min or max of my values. 
and then I choose a, a grid uh, a grid meter which I might go five meters and under this advanced tab you've got turf density and you've got turf height scale to choose from I'll choose the height scale and everything's set to full height so you've got to go to your height down uh, for this one for when you've got height scale selected and you'll see that as I start to click the grass starts to get um, smaller so the height changes on the grass okay so this allows you to change your height throughout uh, the route as well so you've got another another option there so it's not just the density so if I'm changing the density you'll see oh, I might just change that to five meters if I'm changing the density you'll see the how, how thick or the amount of blades will get reduced if I'm changing the height you'll see that it's the actual height of the blades so they're the two options that you've got there with your bindings um, they both do different things based on what you've got selected over here and whether you've got selected height up or height down remember to change the height scale always use height down because it starts at full that's that you won't get any higher than full than than 100 percent and then your height density you can use height up um, to make it more dense and height down to make it less dense uh, I think that's most of the information you need out of this tutorial changing some of these values you know you can get really long grass depending on what uh, what parameters you want to put in you can change the width obviously and change it to five will be really thick um, you've got some uh, other options like and change that back to one uh, when I said you wanted square grass you'll see that the tops are now square like it's been cut off so again that's uh, more options you might want to play around with some transparency so if you make your your blades thicker you'll start to see uh, some transparent blades um, you can add different turf effects to, to that to get uh, transparency showing through it uh, I'm not sure which one it is I think it might even be number 10 has some transparency on it so that oh, sorry my my uh, post processing is set to high so I can't zoom in too far without getting blurry uh, and knock that back change our grass back to that one scale it down a bit so you're you also want to look at put a tree in there and maybe a person to get a bit of scaling happening you'll also see if you change the density uh, dispersal to zero you'll get sort of crops crop lines happening because um, the dispersal is if we go back to the wiki like this with your blades they're not they're not through each other and spread out so they're all clumped together uh, again you won't really notice if you put it to one because they'll be all they'll be all through each other so even I think point two is not bad as well then you've got your bending uh, oh, sorry your bending is your animation up here if you really turn that up it might only be able to go to one actually but you'll start to see it really start to bend uh, which quite, looks quite nice in some instances but um, you've got to tweak it to what you want to use it for and finally we'll oh, we'll cover bunching so bunching is it's probably hard to see uh, without turning the dispersal right down so you can see the the bunches look as they say they would there uh, all kind of in a, a line together um, could be useful for making certain types of grass we'll take that back down turn our dispersal up and if you want to get a little bit thicker you can change the uh, seed points to maybe 0.4 that will make um, more blades at each seed point which isn't a bad option you can also tweak uh, 
the constant values to make more blades at those points as well. So they're going to make both both options are going to make it thicker. Um, you just need to try and tweak it to how you want it to look and also how the performance will go as well. Um, keeping in mind also when you paint down a grass texture under that, it's not going to be as obvious when you're zooming out and in uh, that you've got grid and yellow lines underneath it. So I hope that covers most things uh, in detail for you guys. If there's anything I've missed or I haven't explained as well as you would like, um, make sure you comment and get in contact with us and I'll cover it in more detail and hopefully uh, you can understand it a bit better. Uh, thanks for watching this turf video. In future videos we will uh, do some presets for short and long grass and a few other different types and we'll also cover how to create uh, a turf effects asset and uh, install it into Content Manager. Thanks.